Have you ever had that kind of dream where it's so, you're so awake in the dream, you're not sure if you're really awake or asleep? Have you ever had that kind of dream? dream where this weird creature walked into the wall and says, quick, who wrote the famous novel by Herman Melville and what was the author's name? And I go, oh, don't tell me. I know it's on the tip of my tongue. I don't know, I don't know where it came from, but, but it's such a complicated answer. Is Matt there? Uh, Matt Slagle, Matt Otero, or Matt Curry. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt Slagle. Okay, just thank you. Thank you. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. So, Matt, this is Walter Day calling back from Twin Galaxies about the Pac-Man 25th anniversary story. In 1981, the arcade scene was very big. Twin Galaxies opened up on November 10th, 1981. It was an absolute magical place. It seemed to be so free of worries and just so full of happiness and excitement. We've gained a lot of notoriety and the reputation for being the video gaming capital of the world. We used to refer to it as the Dodge City of video games because that's the place where all the fast guns would congregate. We had all the classics. We had Wizard of War, Donkey Kong, Missile Command, Spears and Booters, Tempest, Gorf, Asteroids, Tron, Joust, Burger Town, Pac-Man, Centipede, Berserk, Dragon's Lair, Star Wars, Frogger, Galaga, Robotron, Eagle? Something like Eagle. There were several games that sucked. I could spot an arcade a mile away. Before I could drive, I was walking to the arcade. It was sort of like my second home in a way. You didn't know what to expect. You'd walk in, and there was always a chance there'd be a new game out there. And the game would arrive, and you'd have like people stacked up and lined up waiting to play. But yeah, that was packed. You could not get on that game. There was a line out to the door. You could find a video game anywhere. And it was just a different era. opportunity suddenly popped up. A kid named Steve Jurassic played Defender nonstop in one quarter and hit me up with 23 million points. So I called up Williams Electronics in Chicago and asked them if this was a world record. And they said, we don't know. And so I offered to keep track of the scores for the industry. For some crazy reason of divine faith, they all said, yeah, when anybody calls about scores, we're going to send them to you. Send your playing techniques or high scores to the International Scoreboard in Ottumwa. I was the official scorekeeper for the video game industry. Here are the top finalists. And within months, we're getting 30, 40, 50 phone calls a day. And so I called out to Ottumwa. I went and talked to these people. And we end up calling up Walter. I contacted Walter. Walter put together the only infrastructure that serious video game players could even become attracted to. There was nobody else trying to do this. Walter was the only person. I remember talking to him on the phone. I think you just called him. And I called the phone number and, and Walter answered. Walter. 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 Walter Day. I looked at the scoreboard and I saw that there were some people who were just obviously superstars. What I found out was though that I wasn't just the best player in my arcade. I was one of the best players in the country.
back seat we have the entire uh, spare boards and the uh, entire board system from my berserk machine and um, uh, we can play some berserk. That's the whole key right here is to play some berserk. My dad worked two jobs most of the time to, to make a living. Went to one baseball game uh, in our enti my entire life when I was about uh, 11 years old. And I still remember the game. Our team lost, but my dad was there, you know. He died in March of 78. Uh, he died of a heart attack. He died in my arms. I had tried CPR on him, and he just didn't make it. It really devastated me. And I was just very lonely, seeking things to do, didn't have any direction. One day I walked into the underground arcade in Shelby, North Carolina. There was uh, these two guys in business suits over there playing a game called Berserk. What a winner does is they find something that they can do well and they just do it over and over and over. And uh, that's where you get your specialist at. Well, I became a specialist in Berserk. In Berserk, uh, you are a humanoid and you are just running through this very simple maze and there are these robots who don't like it. What happens is a lot of robots appear on the screen and you can't move your humanoid and they're shooting at you and you just gotta pray that joystick will kick in. Intruder alert, intruder alert. Delta humanoid. There's also a nemesis, evil auto. It's a stop sign. Stop sign, smelly thing. And if he pounces on you, he kills you. When somebody smiles and yet wants to kill you, that is the ultimate and he was a maniac. In the game of Berserk, there are 64,000 room combinations. Well, no one had figured that out yet. I mapped out every room, every combination. I was on the top. But if you don't have someone to help you go even higher, you wane. I was a chemical engineer, mostly in the lithium industry. I was laid off from work in 1982. And Ron Bailey would prove to be an interesting fellow to meet. His a major interest in his life was ham radio. I thought he'd have a, you know, a little box sitting on the table. This guy had rooms full of stuff. I have a motto, nothing in moderation. He had a tower that was over 90 foot high that you could actually walk up a ladder. Destroy the intruder. Kill the human. I didn't know this guy was a closet berserk player. He made me feel good because of the fact that someone older was having an interest in me. Boys, even if you're a boy at 22, you need encouragement from older fellas. We knew, as the two of us, we could beat anybody in the world. When you play a video game, there are days when you're playing the game and it's fighting you. Then there are days when you and the game become one. At some point in time, I felt as if I could get inside the machine mentally. You're fluid, you're focused, you're with the game. You're right there with it and, and everything is right. There's nothing that's wrong. And you can even hear what's going on outside of your realm. You're so focused, there's nothing. It is almost like a spiritual experience. I've had spiritual experiences, and it's a very similar feeling. When you're playing that game, and you're totally focused, and you're totally one with that game, 